The years of road trip books on tape and checking out 50 novels at a time on our mother's library cards are far from the present, as teens across America dismissively recall the days when their bedside tables were ruled by the Wizard of Oz and Nancy Drew, as opposed to iPhones, iPads, and MacBooks. In grade school, we always had library class and right to read week. Because all the students collectively read 1,000 novels, our principal literally launched herself into the sky in a hot air balloon. Of course, we were always given incentives to read, but as kids, literature was just part of the daily schedule. Nights we took home picture books from the Scholastic Book Fair. Mornings we huddled around our teachers on carpet squares to listen to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. At the middle school in Hudson, the administration has even implemented a half hour at the end of every day for students to do nothing but read. But if we fast forward to high school, there's hardly time for books in the minimal space between homework tests and extracurricular activities. Suddenly there are only so many hours in a day, most of which don't allow for reading much more than what is assigned in English class. And when analyses and annotations are designated to every chapter, for many students, the anticipation of reading disappears. In its place stands Cliff Notes. This morning, with the help of the Rotary four-way test, I will prove that, in the busyness of their academic and social lives, the vast majority of teenagers completely lose interest in reading, and with that, the many benefits that literature provides. The pieces of the Rotary four-way test are as follows. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And is it beneficial to all concerned? Well, to begin with, is it the truth? I have to start by mentioning that every time I go into the library, something seems a little out of place, and this may be that no one is reading in the library. In fact, finding a student with a book in their hands has become a challenge over the years. In a survey of 52 Hudson High School students, exactly half replied that they hardly ever read a book that wasn't assigned in class. 35% said that they read a book in their spare time now and then. 52% of students don't consider reading to be one of their hobbies. 70% currently don't have time in their schedule to read. And according to Time Magazine, 45% of American 17-year-olds read a book by choice once or twice per year. So why do numbers like these keep on increasing? And is it fair to all concerned? My concern is that people of all ages, teenagers especially, just don't understand the diverse advantages that come with reading a little bit every day. And this, by all means, is not fair. Reading is one of the best methods to relax and reduce stress. Incidentally, it's also a good way to promote focus, concentration, and self-discipline. Great readers are often great writers and strong analytical thinkers. And in order for high school students to enjoy skills such as these, it is only fair that they first learn to enjoy reading. This leads to my next question. Will the exercise of teenagers reading build goodwill and better friendships? To quote Oscar Wilde, it is what you read when you don't have to that determines what you will be when you can't help it. With every book we read, we learn about another human struggle, and with it comes the knowledge to grow from the experiences of others. The insight gained through books can be used to understand our peers and reach out to those in need. In literature, we often find the themes and morals that maybe weren't so apparent in the movie adaptation, and goodwill and better friendships result. And finally, will a revival in the interest of reading be beneficial to teenagers? Last weekend, I babysat a little girl who decided to write a book. And when she was finished, even though there were no actual words written on the page, she recited to me, <laughs> In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines and rain or shine. The smallest one was... Madeline. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah, well, I toyed with the idea of trying to explain to a four-year-old girl what plagiarism was, but I decided against it, because her exposure to books proved multiple points. Reading improves our memory and expands our vocabulary. It builds our creativity and innovation and stimulates our minds. There is no hobby more beneficial than reading. And although many things seem to come and go throughout the ages, reading is timeless. Every career requires careful reading, whether this means examining emails and essays, reference books and reports, contracts and constitutions, and treaties and tabloids. Will my generation be prepared for this? Although those good old days of road trip books on tape may lie behind us, 
it would appear that there is still hope. In that survey of 52 Hudson High School students, 62% said that if they had more free time, they would definitely try to read more. It could be for hours on the beach in the summer, or in the minutes in between classes, or in place of the time you spend on Twitter every day. Reading shapes us as humans and molds our individuality. We find inspiration and understanding in centuries of literature, volumes upon volumes of stories, fulfillment that can't be found on a TV screen or a device. If there are 129,864,880 known titles on the planet, then there is one for you, and there is one for every teenager who thinks that they don't like to read, but who knows? With the right book and just a little bit of time every day, the teens of today will experience the best of times, certainly not the worst of times. Thank you.